morning year 11 um strange times i um i know quite a lot of you have um been uh, working hard over the last two days um since we we, we found out now that uh, gcse exams won't go ahead i think what's most important year 11 is that you continue to work um, and there are two reasons for this the first reason is because this year is going to be slightly different to last year um, I believe they will really take into account um, the work that is done from June, January the 4th um, for the rest of the academic year for as long as you're at school as year 11s I think that's going to be a really key criteria so your engagement in in the remote learning uh, your participation your communication with teachers keep showing them what you're doing send them all of the work you're doing uh, like you will do after this lesson to me give a, a photograph email or upload it onto show my homework um, and what all teachers are doing is they're keeping a file folder of every student's work um, so that actually we can we can use that when we're coming to teacher assess grades well at the moment we we, we don't know i think that there is going to be potentially um, another set of ppes later in the year so it's another reason to it's number two really um, you, you need to continue to revise and prepare for those as if they they will go ahead um, I will be writing to your parents before the weekend again. Um, I will also be looking at potentially doing an assembly next week for the whole year group um, and also having a Zoom call at some point next week to answer any questions and answers, uh, answer those um, from yourselves and, and, and your parents. Um, but what um, we've decided to do for, for history for you guys is to carry on like we would have done um, in terms of revising medicine. Uh, so today's video is about um, the introduction it's about um, the ancient medicines, Galen and Hippocrates, the four humours um, and the old ideas around what they thought used to cause a disease and how they used to treat diseases um, in uh, ancient Greek and Roman times. Um, I'm also going to put a, a link uh, as well to another video that uh, a teacher's done on National Oak, which is a really in-depth um, video which is 100% worth watching um, and there are some questions that the teacher um, has put on there but I also wanted you to do obviously um, my work I wanted you to say hello to me as well uh, and see me um, because tomorrow at 11.30 we'll have a live lesson um, and this is probably the format it'll continue to take the live lesson will go uh, through today's lesson take any questions but also um, go into a bit more depth and detail tomorrow um, this is going to be a, a bit of an overview today and, and an opportunity for you to work independently okay so um, on the screen you can see the, the the standard four sections we know we're not doing Elizabeth anyway um, but I'm confident that um, you know America well because that's what you did on the first PPE we will revise as, 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 as normal like we would have done the conflict and tension in Asia um, and the career in Vietnam unit um, and like I said now over the last over the next kind of six weeks we'll be focusing on revising Britain health and the people what myself and Miss Hayden will also do is we'll be setting kind of exam questions here and there and there's one today and um, you'll have time to complete these exam questions but um, we're going to keep a folder of your answers for these as well so we can mark these and use these as more evidence um, when we're generating our teacher assess grades um, so it will not be your PPE grade um, because your PPE grade was only 33% of the GCSE it was only on one unit um, so we will use that to help us but it will, will certainly not be that grade that um, teachers use for their teacher assess grade just to let you know okay so today's lesson um, again like normal um, with these you can pause me uh, and answer questions and do activities when I ask you to that would be brilliant uh, and most importantly absolute key now take a picture of the work or if you're doing it on word send it as an attachment um, to me on show my homework or my email so I know what you've done so I can keep a log of that okay right um so silent starter as usual there's a key learning question there i must say i've got quite a lot of the medicine books and i'm going to think of a way of potentially getting these back to you so you can use them for your revision um i need to sort those out and get them to you but for now if you work on a uh, through a, an old spare exercise book or online paper or even on word documents and keep it essentially that's great so you've got the key learning questions to jot down there and you have got six minutes to answer those questions so if you now pause me, it's important that you do this properly rather than just carrying on listening to me. Um, pause me and have a go at those five questions. If there's gaps, there's gaps. OK, that's fine. We'll go through them. All right, off you go. 
Okay, so in response to those questions, um, you should have remembered Hippocrates was a ancient Greek doctor, really significant doctor due to the Hippocratic Oath, uh, due to clinical observations, um, due to the 48 books that he wrote, um, and uh, a, a, key, a key doctor, one of the key figures in, in ancient medicine. What were the four humours? You should have had blood, phlegm, yellow bile and black bile, and this idea of the, those being balanced, which we'll go over shortly. How did ancient Greeks think we got ill? Well, they obviously thought that those four humours, if they were unbalanced, was the reason why we got ill. Um, and that's the, the point we made. If they thought they were too hot, they'd give them a cold cucumber, or if they were too cold, they'd give them a hot hot pepper. Um, so it's balancing those ideas. Um, Hippocratic oath we still use today. I know a lot of you know this. Um, this is obviously the oath that uh, of patient doctor confidentiality, confidentiality um, and the fact that um, the, the doctor is supporting um, the patient all the way through. Uh, and clinical observation is something again we still use today which is just observing symptoms changing okay over time um, and that's something that was born through this period the ancient Greek period. Okay, so a reminder of the four humours just here. You can't quite see behind my picture phlegm, um, but you can see the idea was that they linked to all of these seasons um, and they linked to all of these elements. Um, so that's just a good reminder. I will also obviously put this PowerPoint um, on show my homework because you'll need this. You'll need to pause this separately to complete the activities. Um, but that's just a reminder there um, about the elements, the seasons and the humours. So again, a bit more detail about them here. Um, and we knew that the ancient Greeks believed that these had to be balanced. Um, so black bile, again, that they, they thought this was if you had too much, there's evidence of being depressed and sluggish. Um, they thought as well, if you had apparently too much blood at the time, that you were hot, um, feverish and bad tempered. They also thought moving on um, yellow bile, if there was too much of yellow bile in your body, that you would feel really sick. OK, and phlegm, they believed that you would be tearful and unhappy. OK, so we know now with the wonders of modern science that this uh, is all complete rubbish. However, at the time, um, there was some sense in it um, and therefore they, they thought that these four needed to be imbalanced. Otherwise, you would get ill uh, in one of the ways I've described just there. So why does he matter? OK, um, so many have said that he was one of the most important figures in the history of medicine. And he's almost one of the fathers of medicine certainly one of the pioneers of ancient medicine um, and his books you know the books he wrote were still used for thousands of years because the church supported the ancient ideas for a long time and we know if we go from ancient times ancient greek ancient rome all the way through up to the middle ages how much power the church had during the norman conquest of 1066 you still know how much power the church had Therefore, um, it's important to remember that his work um, carried so much weight for so long until really up until Henry VIII in, in 1530s and when he reformed the church and challenged the church, when people started challenging the church. So um, these, these theories carried a lot of weight and you know, theories of the four humours focus on observations, recommendations around natural treatments like herbal remedies. Uh, and these natural causes of disease and we, we speak quite a lot don't we about miasma and bad smells causing disease along with other things so so he, he did he was really significant and, and the national oak video that is attached underneath here um, what the the teacher does there is they go into a bit more detail around ancient Rome and ancient Greece so it's definitely well worth a watch and well worth completing that work um, on top of what I'm saying you here, those that do engage with those videos as well, um, obviously when I'm looking at those teacher assessed grades, I'm going I'm to use that and see how hard you've all worked um, and, and the quality of work you've produced um, doing this, what I'm saying today, but also that extension task. So it's well worth watching. The detail is, is good, kind of AS level detail. It's excellent. OK, um, so just based on what we've said, press pause. Just give yourself three minutes, really short paragraph. Remember, we do a lot of prep, a lot of writing, a lot of focus on exam technique and history. Uh, just tell me the significance of Hippocrates. Uh, and when you're doing this paragraph, can you try and use the word impact? Uh, because what you do there is you make sure you answer the question uh, and talk about the impact he would have on medicine over time. OK, um, so press pause on me um, for three or four minutes and have a go at that. Okay, 
So we've done a really quick whistle top kind of five minutes on Hippocrates. Um, obviously, you've got your white revision guides. Um, there's BBC Bite Size 2. There's the resources that I'm sharing here. There'll be stuff you've done before in your books, which I want to think of a way of getting out to you, whether I post that out or whether I arrange them in reception and you collect them, because I do think you will need not only your medicine books, but your Vietnam, Korea and your America books and potentially your PPEs uh, to have a look at um, in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, when you continue to, to write and improve your history grade. Okay, so who was Galen? Galen now is um, a Roman physician. Um, uh, he, he, he was a Roman doctor um, um, at Roman times, sorry, but Greek. So get, get, always get this confused. Um, so obviously in Roman times, um, but he was from Greece. Um, he'd come across and he'd been trained in Alexandria in Greece. Um, and Galen learned his trade actually at the School of Gladiators. Um, now, if you just stop and think about why that was was significant, it means he's able to look at so many wounds. If you've seen the film Gladiator with Russell Crowe in it, you can you can see um, how brutal um, the arena is where they fight. Um, and so if he's working as a physician or a doctor there, he's exposed to so many different types of injuries and it really does develop his understanding of, um, of how you uh, treat different um, injuries and diseases. So I've actually put a clip here um, underneath uh, from BBC Bite Size just, just to give you a bit of a better understanding um, of how medicine developed. So obviously the PowerPoint is linked on Show My Homework. Just copy and paste that and uh, watch that clip because it will help you a little bit further. Whilst you're doing it, do make some notes on what you get from the clip. Okay, so you can pause me, uh, go to the PowerPoint and do that now. That would be great. Okay, so you'll have a bit of an introduction to Galen, um, but the, the kind of big question that I'm going to get you to think about today is one that you thought about back in year 10, and I don't think it's an issue at all repeating it, um, because um, I will use your answer to this particular question again to put into my mark book and, 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 and get a bank of, of data that we can use to generate these teacher assessed grades. Um, but there's information there. There are there are 11 different uh, points, in fact, 10 different points, aren't there, about whether he did help or hinder the development of medicine. And this is a big theme that runs through this unit is how much did it progress? Unlike the America unit, which is 53 years from 20, 1920 to 73, or even conflict in Asia, which is two wars. So you have from 1950 to 75, so only 25 years. This unit is what we call a breadth study. So it's very much thematic around health and the people um, and around medicine. Um, so, so these 10 things here, you can, you can read through now and decide um, whether they actually helped or, or hindered the development of medicine. Um, the first one, for example, he wrote 60 books combining Greek ideas with his own. You would suggest helps medicine. Some of you who think a bit deeper may also think, well, actually, it might hinder later if people don't challenge his ideas. But but generally, the fact he produces books, um, so the educated, the, the few that can read and write um, can, can learn from his ideas, is going to help medicine progress. And the second point reiterates that and confirms that, that they're used in medical um, universities up until 1500, when, when the church is losing power because of because of the Reformation. Um, if you look at kind of this point maybe here, which is point seven, I don't know whether you can see my cursor, uh, the medieval church did not allow people to challenge Galen's ideas. Well, this may hinder uh, the development of medicine, because I think in, in any science and any medical understanding, you need people to think of ideas like we thought of the vaccine recently, but challenge other ideas and, and um, try and come up with better ideas and better solutions. So, so that would be an example of, of, of his work hindering medicine developing. OK, and also the point beforehand you can see is wrong. We know that um, the heart doesn't control speech. We know the heart um, from your science, simple science, pumps blood around the body. Uh, so therefore, the fact he proves that it's the brain, not the heart, um, is, is, is going to help um, medicine develop. OK, so there's quite a few things in, in, in there that um, will help you with the main answer. And it, it's on the PowerPoint, the main question. So I'd certainly use that um, to, to take a look at um, what I'm going to ask you to do now, which is the last slide. OK, so I, I, I basically put the big question up there. 
um, and the information that you need to access that big question is is, is on the slide beforehand. Um, so I would use that information and anything else from your revision guides to, to have a go at this question. And, and this is kind of the main task I'm asking you to do today, which we will discuss uh, in our live lesson tomorrow. Um, what I would also say, Year 11, is, um, like I said earlier, the, the attachment I'm going to put on there from the National Oak and the Link. Um, it's an organisation that I know you're probably watching videos of in English. For me, the downside to it is it's not your teacher. It's not your teacher that's talking to you um, and teaching you. Um, however, um, that is across the country. I've got a few colleagues I used to work with in, in London who've contributed to that in different subjects. And they've picked really experienced teachers and, and examiners to deliver those um, at a really high spec and a really high level. Um, so please do um, watch the one that I've put on here as well, because um, it might help further develop your understanding uh, in preparation for our live lesson tomorrow. So have a go at this. Um, obviously, um, our normal lesson is period four today, but I'm actually in school today with the key worker and vulnerable group for year 10. Uh, so um, please send it across at any point uh, today when you complete this. I'll obviously just give you a quick thumbs up and say thanks for your work to let you know I've got it. And then I'm going to keep a folder. And then every day I've got year 11, the work I do in the evening is going to be looking at your work uh, and then having my mark book there because I think um, it's important that we prioritise and I prioritise you um, out of all the five classes I teach um, as the most important um, because I, I really want all of you to, to continue to learn but also continue to work um, towards what I think is going to be some form of um, added assessment later this year. Um, when you come back into school I don't know um, but I really do think um, that we're going to need to use the time when you come back into school um, preparing for a potential PPE on, on Vietnam and Korea um, and obviously this, this paper as well. Um, so good luck, have a go at the activities that I've lined out with this being the most important. Um, email me any questions um, but like I said the, the most important thing at the moment is to keep engaging with the work and I, I, I really need it not to be optional tomorrow. I, I, I'm going to need it all of you in that live lesson um, at 11.30 tomorrow. So I'll send out the link um, either later today or tomorrow morning. OK, speak soon. Um, and like I said to you at the beginning of the call, we'll be in touch with parents about um, the announcement yesterday. We will also be doing some form of Year 11 um, assembly via Teams um, and also some Zoom Q&A. Um, and that will all be happening over the kind of the next 10 days um, to keep in touch. OK, take care. Bye.